Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Salon Marketing Live. I'm so excited today because we have a special guest, Kelly Ann Callahan, joining us today from Sedona, Arizona. She's kind of on like a working holiday today, so I'm so happy that she could join us and I'm so excited because Kelly, I mean, she's an amazing person. I met her in person at uh, spray tan events before, and she's just one of those people that's super energetic, super magnetic, and if you've never seen her before, follow her on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, because she's so inspiring, and she helps beauty business owners to level up, to grow their business, and um, to learn from her experience as a beauty business owner as well. Um, so there's so much to talk about today, but it's we're going to talk a lot about mindset. We're going to talk a lot about business growth. We're going to talk a lot about conquering fear, what Kelly's done in her business. I'm so excited um, to jump in. So Kelly, can you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us what you're all about? Yeah, absolutely. What a great introduction, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Kelly Ann Callahan. I was a corporate woman. I was born in LA and grew up just with the notion of, you know, you had to do what everybody else is doing and that is going into the corporate world mm -hmm. and, you know, doing the nine to five thing to be successful and going to college and all of this stuff. So I did all of the things, um, but quickly realized, you know, it wasn't something I was passionate about. I really wanted to be able to travel. You know, I'm here in Sedona, Arizona right now and I love to travel. It's something that's been, you know, close to my heart since I was really little. And I dreaded every single time I had to ask for permission, you know, had to ask for permission to oh go do gosh. something. Yeah. And nowadays, like people regularly only get like two weeks of holiday. That's 10 weeks of holiday out of all of those weeks. It seems so, it's so disproportionate, especially compared to other parts of the world. Right. I know. And it actually really brought me back to, you know, being a child. My dad was very, very strict. And so I had to ask for permission for everything. And I remember just hating it. And I mm -hmm. think that's kind of what lit the fire underneath my booty to actually do something else and, you know, be different. Uh, so I was working corporate for a long time. I was about 25 when uh, I was actually making six figures at a local telecommunications company, which I didn't mind so much the actual... The money, obviously, it was great, but the day to day of you know having to go in from nine to five, having these breaks that were it kind of bugged me that um, you know that I had to do that. So mm -hmm. what I did was I, I traveled for a little bit. Uh, I went to a couple of different countries, and after eighteen months of travel, I came back and decided that I was just going to take the leap of faith and start a business. And so I started a mobile spray tanning business because it was very start. And I just figured, you know, if then I would corporate life, but in like there was no plan B really, you know? Yeah. So, um, I just cut out for one second. Can you, you said that you started a mobile spray tan business. Um, what was yeah. your motivation for choosing spray tanning and choosing the beauty industry? So I actually was working at a tanning salon when I was about 18. And I think that had something to do with it, but what actually happened was I was looking at an old diary. I opened it up and on the top it had entrepreneurial ideas. Some of the ideas that I just jotted down a couple of years prior. Mm -hmm. And the top thing was mobile tanning. And I didn't know how I even knew what a mobile tan was. I didn't even, I had no idea what it was. But I Googled <laughs> it. I started researching and I figured, you know, this looks pretty easy. I actually booked somebody to come to my house to do a mobile tan. And so when I saw the process, I figured I could do it super easy, low cost to start up. And it's in the beauty industry, and I love working with women. That's my passion, is working with women. And if I could help them make them feel good about themselves, then that was kind of a, you know, so. I love that. I so that was your motivation for jumping into that and taking this huge leap. So you quit your job, I guess, and then just kind of figured it out and figured out how to start your business, get your first clients, et cetera. Yeah, so I actually quit 18 months prior to me starting the business because I wanted that time to travel and I had money saved up and that sort of thing. So it was really good. Um, I'm very much a saver, so it was perfect because I was able to leave my job when I just felt, you know, the need to. Mm -hmm. And 
when I started the business, I had no background in marketing and business. None of my family are entrepreneurs. Nobody is. I have no friends that are entrepreneurs at that point in time. And so it was kind of just jumping, taking the leap of faith and figuring it out because I knew that I had the intelligence to do it and the drive to do it. It was just a matter of actually putting forth the effort. And so I did a lot of training, a lot of um, asking for help in certain, you know, regards, um, and just trying to YouTube and read all of the things to learn more. Yeah. There, well, there's so much resources online nowadays for people to just kind of figure stuff out, jump in. And I'm sure you, it was trial by fire, right? Like you had to learn the hard way. Uh, looking at some of my posts for Instagram and honestly, face palm, complete face palm, because it was just so bad. It was so bad. I had no idea about branding. I had no idea about ideal clients. But, you know, I'm not a perfectionist, which I think is great because a lot of people are actually held back by that. You yes. know, by wanting I, to that's do it me perfectly. personally. I'm a huge perfectionist and I have to combat that and push past it every single day. The fact that you don't yeah. have that barrier in your way is such a good thing. Yeah, but it's also a bad thing, too, because it means that I've made mistakes, you know, and it means that things were messy, but things are always going to be messy when you're learning exactly, whether it's yeah. perfect or not. So, yeah, I love it. So I would love to hear your journey from when you first started out to where you are now. But maybe you can just tell us at this point in your life, what is this? Uh, eight years later, six years, how many years later? This is actually? about six years later. Yeah. So mm -hmm. six years later, what does your business or businesses look like today? And what are you doing now? Yeah, it was very interesting to see the growth and the process being an entrepreneur and tapping into and understanding wow. that as an entrepreneur, you can literally create anything, right? So I decided that, um, I was going to look for problems that our industry, our sunless industry had. And a lot of the problems were the lack of marketing education, lack mm -hmm. of business education, lack of mentors, uh, lack of training programs that were ran by people who were not actual brand owners and trying to sell their product. Yeah. But I wanted to learn from somebody who I was inspired by and who actually did the thing, you know, which is like essentially getting a salon and having employees and, and stuff like that. But there was nobody that I could find that actually was doing anything mm -hmm. like that. So actually it's funny because it was only about six or seven months down the road of me starting to spray tan that I started creating a program. And that was a spray tan training program geared for people who wanted to start a business. So that was going to go over the technique, unbiased solutions uh, reviews, unbiased equipment reviews, talking about business, marketing operations, and really helping women, you know, start the process of becoming a business owner. Yeah, because I so had really 360. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just went on the flip side and just wanted to help women do that. And I thought that, I found that to be a lot more fulfilling for me because it wasn't just I'm spray tanning someone and helping them feel better about themselves. It was actually impacting their lives. And so I really started focusing on that. I love that. That's awesome. So essentially, you started your training business. You started impacting the lives. You said in your bio that you sent me over, you said you've trained more than a thousand, um, several thousand women to do yeah. this kind of business that you've done. You've gone before them. You've made your mistakes. You've learned from them. Um, and what else are you working on these days? Like, what are your projects, your businesses, your passions, etc.? Yeah, so my whole goal in life is to be fulfilled. My whole goal is to be fulfilled. And what that means to me is creating impact and connection and love in everything that I do. It wasn't always like that. I was really in it for the money in the beginning. I was mm -hmm. just like trying to figure this thing out and really sustain a business. Um, and as I started growing, I started realizing like money didn't really make me happy. What made me happy was actually impacting the lives of others and helping other women grow into this confident role of becoming a business owner. And so yeah. now it's, uh, we still have, you know, Slay Beauty Bar is actually the salon that I ended up opening after about two years of, um, you know, doing mobile tans and renting out of a salon. So I got my storefront. And then I also started doing live events. So uh, Slay the Spray is one of them. And that is me basically going around the U.S. and Canada 
and helping women in groups so that way they can learn how to spray tan and um, learn about marketing and mindset. Mm -hmm. And um, aside from that, I'm also doing a podcast. I'm the host of Wake Up to Level Up podcast and the live event, which is more geared for marketing and mindset stuff because I'm starting to veer in that direction of spirituality mindset. Yeah. And it's very, it's that. very holistic for you. I've seen like, well, I'm going to be on your podcast after we're finished recording this and I cannot wait. Um, but you know, I've watched your videos, I've listened to your podcast and I know it's not just about like business strategies of business tactics. Mm -hmm. A whole lot of it has to do with the mindset part and where your head's at and how that translates into your business growth, not just in terms of like how much money you're making, but also like you said, how fulfilled you are, which at the end of the day is why most of us end up going into business, not just for the money. Right. Yeah. Right. And since I made that shift, it's crazy because you become so much more passionate about what you do. You become so much more intentional. And money is the byproduct of that. Yeah, so. definitely. So um, guys, I just wanted to put a quick pause in this for one second because I'd love for anyone watching to jump into the comments, say hi, say hi to Kelly, and tell us um, what kind of beauty business you have and where you're located. Because I just, I love to see who's on here watching with us. And um, so jump into the comments real quick, just introduce yourself, say where you're from, where you're watching from and what kind of beauty business you have because we just love to say hi to you. Yeah. Um, okay, so Kelly, you help and you mentor, you coach and you educate beauty business owners. Um, what are some of the big things that you see them struggling with that are very common and um, are kind of like areas that you try to focus on in terms of helping them? Oh, there's so many things, and that's such a good question. Um, I would say probably the main question that I continue seeing in the groups and throughout um, helping women mentor is, one, confidence, uh, even though they don't directly say it. They won't say, I'm not confident, but they will say in other ways. And so circling back to what their actual fear is um, or the thing that they need to work on most is typically confidence. And then also um, that's kind of linked to that is, is the fear is the fear of not really knowing what they're doing. And mm -hmm. so a lot of the times they won't be consistent. They'll do self-sabotage, you know, without even knowing it, um, which is, you know, just not doing the work that they're supposed to be doing, not being consistent, procrastinating, um, doing work, you know, half ass. I don't know if I can cuss on you. Of course. Yeah. Of course you can. <laughs> okay, cool. And, uh, yeah, so I think mainly it's, it's confidence and then also the, like the passion or the drive or the energy that it takes to actually be consistent within this and either do all the hats or, or wear all the hats or, um, delegate the work because a lot of the times people don't want to do all the work. Like they get overwhelmed, they get stressed, they get tired. But aside from that, they also don't want to delegate the work because they don't want to invest the money and doing that. And so, I that. <laughs> yeah, and, and I get it. I've been in all of those places for sure. But I think what it comes down to is you have to embody the person and the business owner that you want to become, because if you're not embodying that person now, it's going to be really hard for you to gain that confidence. So it's almost like you have to act as if. Yeah. So like fake it till you make it kind of thing. Kind of, yeah. And obviously you don't want to um, like lie or cheat or steal or like anything like that. That's not what that means. I think what it means is just stepping into the role of like, um, I know this is new to me of being a business owner or whatever, you know, thing that you're leveling up to. Um, this is new to me, but I'm going to step into it as if I know what I'm doing and I'm going to be confident. I'm going to ask the right questions and I'm going to ask for help and be humble enough and smart enough to be able to you know, ask for help, delegate the work and take on whatever it is that I can take on um, and have confidence in what I'm doing. Because if you don't have that confidence, people are going to be able to see that and feel mm -hmm. that from you for sure. Yeah, for sure. And definitely that's something that I struggle with. Confidence and fear is something that all of us struggle with. 
So when when women come to you and maybe they don't say it directly, but through their messages, through their posts, through their questions, you can see that the main issue they're having is lack of confidence and a fear that they don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. What kind of advice or what kind of help can you give them? What do you tell them to help them get to kind of a different headspace and feel more confident? Yeah, so I think that has to do with asking the right questions. So everyone is different, obviously, but I think the main thing is what story are you telling yourself? What story are you telling yourself? If you're able to identify the story and if you're able to actually, you know, take some time to think about it and be real with yourself and jot it down in a journal or something, Mm -hmm. you'll be able to see that a lot of that story that you're creating in your mind is not true. It is the perception that you're giving yourself. Um, It's a perception that you have. And anyone can change their perception at any point in time. It's just a matter of actually like doing it and believing it and telling yourself a different story. Yeah, I agree. Totally agree. It's something that like for my own business, I mean, like I said, I've gone through, this is something that I've gone through. It's something that I'm sure you've gone through. Can you talk about maybe in your business journey sometimes when you felt like a real lack of confidence and what you did to kind of like bust through that and change your perspective? Yeah, so I am going to go back to when I first started spray tan training. I started spray tan training uh, without too much experience. And what I did know, though, is that I was actually making a lot really quickly evolving into a new space so I stopped doing mobile really quickly to um, you know the salon and renting out a room I was gaining clients like crazy it was a really um, especially that first six months it was so much growth and Mm -hmm. in business and so um, I remember getting a lot a lot of flack stuff from like other people who have been in the industry for 10, 15 years and, uh, you know, saying I wasn't qualified enough or I wasn't good enough or I, you know, who am I kidding? That sort of thing. And they were very, very blunt about it. Oh, wow. So it wasn't even just you questioning yourself. It was like Mm -hmm. other people calling you out. Right, right, right. So I, because I need what I had been doing and because I had been talking to a couple of other people who are more experienced than I was and rooting for me and telling me I had just gained that confidence and I as I was working with my mentor at the time I knew that I I could teach people how to do that you know and for me that's what also gave me the confidence in knowing that I could help and so started imposing their beliefs on myself, that's when I started stepping back and kind of being like, am I doing the right thing? Uh, you know, questioning it. Mm-hmm. And what it really comes down to, knowing now, looking back at that, it was jealousy and insecurity and fear coming from them. And to be quite honest, not doing as well as I was even at that time. And so it just didn't really make sense to me. And now it kind of does. Um, for anyone who is dealing with fear or people actually imposing their limiting beliefs on you mm-hmm. or beliefs in general um, to just be real with yourself and understand that if you truly feel like you are doing this world something great, something good, and you're coming from a good space and you're doing good work, then continue doing it. But if you feel like you are um you know, doing people a disservice and obviously you want to kind of rearrange what you're doing. Yeah, definitely. For me, myself, I find that like whenever I'm feeling insecure, lack of confidence, and I'm scared of like, oh my gosh, what am I actually doing? Kind of like imposter syndrome or just feeling like not good (laughs) enough. The, the way, the thing that I try to do every single time is stop putting the focus on external people on like, you know, people who have an opinion or people who maybe not even have an opinion, but I'm afraid to have an opinion and just focus on who I'm helping. So in my case, it would be like my students or my community and really just focus on this is how I'm helping them. This is the impact that I'm making. 
if I were to let my fear get in my way and not help them and stop doing what I'm doing, I'm actually doing a disservice to other people. Right. So it's shifting that focus away from like, a, a lot of times it's like, no one's even hating on you. No one's even, right. you know, no one's even <laughs> doubting you. It's you doubting yourself, afraid that other people are doing that. So just yeah. kind of shifting the focus back to who you're helping is like a huge one as well. Um, yeah. So before I have so many more things that I want to talk about, Kelly, but I just want to give a shout out to people who are watching. Ellie's watching. She's a nail and brow technician in Plymouth, UK. We've got Lucy here. She says, I learned so much at Wulu, which I think is wake up to level up. Yeah. She says, growing your mindset has drastically improved my sunless business and myself as a person. I'm so happy to hear that. We also have mm -hmm. Jamie Lynn watching. And she says, imposter syndrome, been there, self-validation that you can make it and you're on the right path, positive mindset. I love it. So definitely everybody can totally relate to this topic. I love it. Yeah. Um, so uh, my next question for you is, mm -hmm. Kelly, with all of the changes that you've done in your own business, I mean, you went from not knowing anything about the sunless industry to starting your own business, growing it, um, then starting your own uh, training business. Now you have a podcast, you're doing events, um, and you're doing coaching and mentorship, etc. What for you are the things that you think have been important to your success. So either your mindset or your habits or the kind of things that like looking back on your career, are you able to kind of like get that perspective of, I think that I did this right. I think that this is why this worked for me. I think that that's why I've had this kind of success. Yeah, absolutely. I love that question. I think it really does come down to confidence, number one. So what that means to me is the belief that I can actually do this and I can do it in a way that feels good. Mm -hmm. uh, I also feel like another thing that has helped me is drive. I've just had like a natural passion and drive to make things work. And I think that comes from not wanting to go back to corporate life and mm -hmm. also to be able to prove to myself that I could actually do it. And like you mentioned earlier, stop looking for external things to validate me. I just need to validate myself. And for me, a lot of that confidence and that security and that love and that, um, yeah, just overall confidence in myself comes from the things that I have accomplished. So it was like little building stones, right? One thing after another, once I was able to do this, then I was able to compound on that and do the next thing and do the next thing and do the next thing. And I think just uh, being consistent as well and trying the things without fear because a lot of the times, like I mentioned earlier, we allow fear to hold us back from mm -hmm. living our true potential. And a lot of the times this fear is just made up stories that we tell ourselves in our heads and it's what holds people back. It's what I see all the time. And I do have fear, but I learn to work through the fear every single time. And it's crazy to think like I had a live event, wake up to level up earlier this year with, uh, you know, 150 women from all around the world coming to this place that I created in my mind that was so incredibly scary to put together, but it came out so beautifully. And thank you, Lucy, for the shout out. I am um. so glad it had impact on you. Um, it's just crazy to see within five or six years how you can expand and grow into like a whole new person. So. Yeah. So how did you decide when it was time to jump onto something new or let go of something and try something new? Like I'm sure we all, I mean, we all have so many business ideas probably in our heads of like, I could do this or I could do this, but how do you know when it's actually time to move into that new thing? Yeah, and it takes time to learn that, actually. It takes a lot of time to figure things out when it comes to not doing all the things. Because if you're creative like me and kind of have ADD a little bit, like you want to do everything, and yeah. that's how it was in the beginning. And in the beginning, I found myself just no boundaries, no boundaries, burnout. It was horrible for the first couple of years. And as I started to grow, I realized, Let's focus, like you had mentioned, on impact. What is this going to, how is this going to impact the people that I'm working with? And what is my overall vision for my life? And so um, 
with that, I've just been able to kind of figure out and tap into my intuition and be real with myself as far as what is it that I want to create, not only in my business, but also how do I want to feel on a day to day day basis? Mm -hmm. And what do I want my life to look like? Yeah. And so when I have that vision in my mind, it has allowed me to really dig in a little bit deeper to figure out, is this product service, thing that I'm trying to create or do, is this serving my overall goal or is it not? And if it's not, then I let it go. And if I also, if I feel like, oh, I'm dragging my feet to do this thing, if I don't want to do it, I, I know that it's time to either delegate it or let it go. Yeah. And the things that kind of come to me that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is such a good idea. I'm so excited about it. I really, really want to do it. Uh, typically like I could just feel, I know I'm very intuitive within my, you know, for myself and I will take that leap and I will take that action. Even if it's scary, I will do it because I'm so excited about it. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Being excited or even like that nervous energy is usually a way to kind of know that you're going in the right direction. Like for me, for example, doing video, I love doing video. I was so nervous about it, but before I started doing all these live videos, I got really excited about it, thinking about it, and I just knew like, okay, I think that this is kind of the direction that I should be going in, and it, obviously it's made such a big difference for my business too, so. Yeah, and you're uh, so good at it. Oh, thank you, you know, <laughs> I, I, used to, I used to work at a TV station when I was in high school, and I always wanted to work in television, always. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I went into marketing, like my life took a different direction, but I kind of always had that in the back of my head. So one way or another, I was able to get back into doing video and that kind of thing. So it kind of snuck back in. So, um, good. so you talked about, okay, I know which direction to go in because I look at my vision for my life and I see, okay, this new project or this new business that I want to work in, it fits into my vision for my life. How... Mm -hmm do you get that vision for your life? Like, how do you know what you actually want? And has that been kind of a struggle for you? Because I feel like so many of us kind of just go with the flow and see what happens and not really take control of our lives. So how do you like create that vision and know that, know that that's the life that you actually want? Yeah. So it's always evolving, right? Like your vision is going to change. Your interests are going to change. You're going to change. So it's always, always evolving. But I think the, the biggest way that I've been able to tap into that is through visualization exercises for me. Um, that has been really, really powerful. And mm -hmm. also within the last couple of years, I have really tuned into my spirituality and started meditating a lot. Um, and along with that, I've had some really tragic things happen within the last two years or so. And with those those pains that happen and those tragedies that happen, I think that you're able to humble yourself a little bit, mm -hmm. and you're you start to realize that this life isn't all about the hustle and grind, and it's not all about work, work, work. It's not all about just doing the things that you're supposed to do because society and everybody else is telling you to do it, yeah. that you can genuinely have free will and you can create a life that you truly enjoy. And a lot of what, and this actually reminds me of what you had just said about wanting to be on the news and stuff like that or on TV, um, circling back to when you were a kid, circling back to when you were a kid and remembering the things that you loved because mm -hmm. a lot of the times we don't lose those things that we love as a kid, yeah. we just forget about them. So if you're able to kind of connect those dots and um, realize like for me, traveling is what I'm passionate about, connection is what I'm passionate about and being able to live my life where I'm free to do the things that I want to do and how can I create that while still have impact that I'm having on, on other people. Yeah. So did you, when you were a kid, did you think that you were going to have your own business or did you know that that was a possibility? No, actually. Um, I just, I remember having a conversation with my mom and much like you, I wanted to be on TV. I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be a model. I wanted to be an entertainer. I wanted to be a singer. 
Um, I've had a lot of different things that I've wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be a psychologist. So there was a bunch of different things, but I remember telling my mom one day, um, you know, mom, why do we have to do like, why do you have to go to work? You know, for me, like I want to be an actress, so I can do that. Right. Like I don't have to watch the people on the TV. I could actually be the actress. And yeah, she just kind of laughed at me, you know, but, <laughs> but for me, that was my mindset since I was little. It's like, I'm, I don't know. I always found that I was more than just working. I saw my parents work hard, 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 hard mm-hmm. from, you know, five o'clock in the morning to five o'clock at night. And it caused a lot of stress in our family. And I didn't want that. No amount of money is worth the stress. You yeah. know, I want to be incredibly happy, fulfilled and enlightened and just you know have that love and that connection and and travel in my life so I love that so you're definitely creating the life that you envisions and the life that even before you knew that you wanted to be an entrepreneur you knew that you wanted to essentially have some amount of control over your life and decide what you were doing um so I love marketing I mean I have a marketing business you're all about marketing too so this is kind of getting a little bit off topic, but it's still in the realm of business. So um, Slay Beauty Bar is the name of your beauty business. Um, mm-hmm. Can you tell us, like in the past six years, since you started it to, you grew it to where it is now, can you tell us like marketing wise or kind of like branding wise or how you talked about your business? Can you tell us what you think were the things that made it successful? Like maybe what were some of the big lessons or important things that you've done to build your business beyond the mindset? And we're kind of like getting into the nitty gritty thing, which I love hearing about too. Yeah. Yeah. So the first thing that comes to mind, and this is going to be just for all of my businesses, not just for Slay Beauty Bar, Mm -hmm. but for the spray tan training and all of that. It would be that I used social media consistently and I was kind of omnipresent. I was everywhere. So I was on, or I am on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook. I have a Facebook group. Uh, I have the podcast. If I haven't mentioned that, I am constantly producing content and constantly showing up every, almost every single day. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I, you know, I don't have to do it. It's because I genuinely like to do it. Yeah. So that is one thing that I would say for sure has helped the exposure. And the main thing within that I would say is video. Video marketing has been absolutely a game changer in my life because it builds that no like and trust factor. And yeah. it really allows people to get to know me. And when people fly in to take the spray tan training course, when I used to offer the one-on-one trainings, it was really, really a great experience because it was like they already knew who I was. You know, they felt connected. Yeah. So you create a space where it's like people feel comfortable around you. They love you already and they want to work with you. Yeah. Yes. Video marketing is so, so, so important. I love it. I think it truly is. I mean, nowadays we want, we don't want to do business with this like random, obscure, don't really understand. Who, oh, we lost Kelly there for a second, guys. We're bringing her back. Oh no, I got you. Okay, You're we're there. here. So sorry about <laughs> yeah. that. I was just ask. I was just saying that um, video is so important because nowadays we don't want to do business with this like random, um, obscure kind of like far away business that we don't really understand the people behind it either. We really want to do business knowing who are the people behind the business more than like the official brand or anything like that. And I find that video is the best way to do that. Yeah, I love it because it's funny how we're so, a lot of us are very disconnected because of our phones and, Mm -hmm. you know, constantly scrolling and stuff like that. But when I got my YouTube channel and when I started producing content that was helpful to people. Like I always think about solving the problem that my clients have. So for those of you guys who are watching that are like, Oh, you know, video, how do I do that? Or what kind of content would I produce? Think about what your clients are Googling. So for example, uh, why do spray tans turn orange or whatever the case may be. And then you can create a video based on that explaining, you know, how DHA works possibly and how not to turn orange. Yes. So much, so much, um, space to create like educational content too. It's not just about like 
doing the beauty services. It's also people want to understand them. They want to feel like they're mm. working with someone who is the expert. So video is also a great way to kind of like brand yourself as the expert there too. Yeah, um, and it's so fun. Yeah, and it's fun. I mean, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. I mean, for my mm -hmm. own journey, I started doing weekly live videos starting in January. Speaking of consistency, um, mm -hmm. I started doing them in January on a weekly basis, and they just get easier every mm -hmm. single time. But to get the confidence to go on video was definitely like, it was not that easy. So also that mm -hmm. reminds me of a question I wanted to ask you, Kelly, you mentioned consistency in your marketing and in your business a few times. Can you talk about how you've developed that consistency either by like the habits that you do or some of like, can you give some tips for what consistency means and how you can actually develop it when you're maybe not feeling so confident or so sure of what you should be doing on a regular basis? Yeah. So for me, it's a little bit different than I think a lot of other people from what I understand. A lot of people are very strategic and uh, very organized. I'm not so much. I'm very much like a, fl a free flower. I, I, I have deadlines for things and that sort of thing. But what I go off is my feeling. So if I, I usually honestly wake up between three o'clock in the morning and, and like five typically what? it's crazy. every single day I don't know why every single day I don't know why <laughs> it's insane but usually in the mornings I feel so energized like that's when I know I'm in alignment I'm in flow I'm feeling good so typically as soon as I wake up with whatever time that is um I will I used to just start working so I used to start working like right away as soon as I woke up and started just producing content and whatever felt good to me at that point in time and so what I would do is say if I felt like I wanted to write, I would create all of my content for my social media posts or say I just felt like I wanted to do videos. I would do all the videos, like four or five different videos, outfit changes and all of that stuff. If I wanted to record my podcast that day, then I would do a couple in that one day. And so it just varies off of my energy. Typically I'm a very energetic person for the most part. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I will do is I will allow myself to on the, con you know, contrast to that is to allow myself to just hang out and be and chill and like not do the work when I don't want to do it because I don't feel like I'm my best creatively speaking when I'm like that. So I kind of base it off of my energy and that's been working for me for the last five years of just being consistent. That's awesome. You're again, that's probably comes from the fact that you're not a perfectionist. And also it seems to me like you kind of have this innate confidence in what you're doing as well. You seem like a very confident person. I mean, maybe, I mean, you've probably had to jump your own hurdles and everything like that. Because the reason I'm saying yeah. that is because for me, my content creation process is like the exact opposite. I mean, yeah. I write blog posts, I do videos, I write eBooks, I, I create a lot of content. But mm -hmm. I have to be extremely disciplined about it. It doesn't, for yeah. me, it's not one of those like natural flow. I wake up and I just kind of do it. I, I'm one of those people, be, probably because I'm a perfectionist, I would yeah. procrastinate. And that's why I have to put a very strict schedule on myself. Yeah, I think for me, I really love being creative. I love allowing myself to have the outlets that I do to produce content. Yeah. So when I'm so driven and passionate and excited, like I have to do it right then and there because yeah. that's when it's going to be the best and most authentic. I love it. Yeah. So, um, that's amazing. I love the consistency thing because we really have to show up on a regular basis, whether that's through videos, whether that's through emails or podcasts or blogs or on social media, it's all about connection. And the best way to get a connection is through being consistent in posting and creating content that helps people create that relationship with us. Yeah. And it, it gives your clients an idea of who you are and that they could trust you because mm -hmm. you are showing up consistently. Yeah, so, I totally great. agree. Um, so Jamie says here, Jamie Lynn is in the comments. She says, I'm a licensed home salon owner, six years and growing. It's called Seriously Her Business, 13 years oh, in the hair that. industry. Yeah, I love that. 
Um, breaking down the stigma by supporting others who want to create uh, by supporting others want to create a professional home beauty business marketing my experiences with empowerment so thank you so much for showing up in the comments Jamie and letting us know about your business um okay final question that I had for you Kelly and the reason I'm asking this is because it's something that I'm trying to work on in my own business is about goal setting um, so we talked a little bit about visualization, about generally visualizing where you want your business to go. Um, but one thing that I struggle with personally is setting both short and long term revenue goals and kind of just like creating those projects to get to that goal. So can you talk to us about maybe what are some of the goals that you've set for your business? You don't have to share revenue goals, but maybe like long term where you want your business to go goals. And mm -hmm. what has been your journey and kind of like creating goals for yourself? It's such a funny process because while I have this vision of how I want to feel and what my life to look like, I it is impossible for me to think very, very clearly about one year, three years, five years down the line because I know things change so rapidly mm -hmm. for me. And I feel like the way that I've been able to continue to grow my business, financially speaking, as well as just like grow as a person and that sort of thing is one, like you said, visualizing the um, you know amount of money, for example, I want to make per month. So I break everything down. So say, for example, uh, this is how it happens in my head. So for a year, I want to make X amount of money. Then I'll break that down into months. Then I'll break it down into the weeks. Sometimes in the beginning when I wasn't creating that much revenue, I would break it down to the day even just to kind of have an idea of how much mm -hmm. I needed to make per day. So now what I do is um, I just break it down year, month, and then weekly. And it's really crazy because I will set these really insane goals for myself that I mean, I believe I can do it, but it's like, ugh, like, you know, it gives you like that anxiety yeah. almost like yeah. it's exciting and scary. And, uh, so I'll do that. And literally every, almost every single day, uh, my meditation practice looks like 30 minutes of meditation when I wake up and then about 10 minutes of visualization more or less. And I will envision what that feels like of making that much money. And so um, it's kind of a, a like very woo woo, but it has worked for me and I've been able to make really, really crazy leaps financially by mm -hmm. doing these exercises on a consistent basis. And I think more than anything, it's one, the belief that, you know, you can achieve that amount of money in whatever time period. But also, um, it's funny because when I am visualizing this, I imagine like, what am I going to do with that money because obviously if you're just wanting it to hoard it like there's not really much emotion behind that yeah, but it's that's like true. what kind of you know impact am I going to have like what kind of growth can I have what kind of where can I invest this money or, or how can I work with charities or whatever it is that you want to do and envisioning how that feels so you're changing your energetic field and, and shifting that um, has really really helped and that's something that I stay consistent with and I've really made some crazy, crazy progress just by having that intention. That's awesome. That's so good. I mean, that's the thing is like we it definitely you have to make those like really practical like plans to get there. But at the same time, I've personally noticed and I'm not like a woo woo person. Like I'm really not that I'm a very practical person. But yeah. at the same time, I've started to realize, I mean, talking with so many business coaches, um, talking with yourself, talking with reading books, everybody says, if you want to set big goals for yourself, you have to visualize it. Like you have to imagine it very clearly in your mind because you have to set a super clear goal, but you also have to visualize like what it feels like. You have to think about it on a consistent basis and that actually ends up changing things why do you think that it ends up changing things why do you think it makes such a big impact yeah because i do believe that if you are believing that you can do it you're you're changing who you were into who you are becoming and so you're setting a different standard for yourself so you're mm -hmm. going to show up differently if you truly believe like hey i'm going to be a millionaire this year you're going to show up a lot differently than if you were making thirty thousand dollars a year like that's yeah. for sure and so 
with that, it, you get excitement. You start actually taking action towards those goals, believing you can do it. And yeah. you are going to push a little bit harder and push that envelope a little bit more because now you see the possibility of it happening instead of being in this like zone of, oh, it won't happen, so I'm not going to do the work. But if you're excited about it and you believe it, you're going to do the work because you're like, yes, I, I want this. Yes, that is perfect. I love it. And I think that that's a really good place to end our chat. Um, Kelly, thank you so, so much. It's been so great. I love hearing all about your businesses, hearing about, you know, where you see your business going, what you're doing now, what you feel passionate about. Um, if anyone wants to get in touch with you or learn more about you, I mean, there's so many places where they can find you, but can you tell them like, you know, how they can find you, get in touch with you, connect with you, etc.? Yeah, so the best way is through Instagram, and my handle is at I am underscore K E L L Y A N N Kelly Ann. And if you guys are into podcasts, you can always find me at Wake Up to Level Up. And our Beauty Business Babes Facebook group is a very, very active. I think we have close to 6,000 girls awesome. on there. And yeah, it's a great resource for everybody. So. Great. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much, Kelly. It's been great chatting with you. It's been so eye-opening and educational. And I hope that everybody else watching has loved it. I'm sure they have too. So. Thank you, guys. All right, guys. Thanks, thanks so much. And I will see you again <laughs> next Tuesday for Salon Marketing Live again. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.